Now that I've switched to using Orca Slicer for both of these printers, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the Creality K1, I'm starting to get curious about which printer can produce better quality results using the same slicer. And I'm not talking about printing at slow speeds, I'm talking about high speed printing, just about the max that these two printers can do. I'm curious, and if you're curious too, stick around to find out. It is important to note that this printer is far more expensive than this printer. This printer here retails for 1200 US. It's like 1550 Canadian or so. And this printer here is about 600 US. Now both of these printers seem to come on sale fairly regularly, but this one I have seen reduced as much as $200 off of the regular price recently. So if this printer can produce even close to the same results as this one, it would be a pretty good deal even though the print volume is a bit smaller on it. Now maybe a better comparison for the K1 would be the P1S or P1P, but I don't have one of those printers, but I have a friend who has done some testing for me and they produce similar results or almost identical results to this printer as long as they've been properly calibrated, whereas this printer does the calibration automatically. So for these tests, I really wanna focus on just the high speed printing and the quality that we get when we're printing at high speed. There's a lot of differences between these printers and I don't really wanna get confused by all of that detail. It really is just high speed printing and the same filament and trying to eliminate as many variables as we can. So on that subject of high speed printing, I have this filament. If you're gonna be printing at high speed, you probably should be using a filament that is rated for high speed like this one. Some of the filaments are okay to print at high speed. I've found good success with PETG and ABS, but some PLA filaments do not print well at high speed at all. So if you do find yourself struggling a little bit with running regular PLA filament on a high speed printer, it may just be because the filament is not rated for high speed printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and split this spool so that we can actually use the exact same spool for both printers. This has been dried already, by the way. So let me load up this spool and then we'll get printed. From my experience so far using these two printers, I think what's gonna happen is that we're gonna see less vibration from the bamboo printer and also a little bit better surface finish. And on the other side of it, from the Creality, we have a little bit better part cooling fan. At least those are my guesses. We're gonna to have to do the test to find out. So if you go to the website for both of these printers, you'll see some notes showing that they can reach speeds up to, I think it's 500 millimeters per second for the bamboo and it's 600 for the Creality printer. And that's a little bit misleading because certain criteria has to be met. One of the criteria is the max flow rate of the filament. And we have pretty much the, the ideal filament for this. One of the other criteria is the size of the part. If the part's too small, you can't reach top speed anyways. And on top of that, the infill is the only thing that has the potential to run at that top speed. And if you look in the settings, you can see the outer wall is set to about 200 typically, the inner wall is set to about 300, and the infill is set to up to 500. So for the sake of these tests, we're actually gonna adjust those. We're gonna leave the infill as 500, but the outer wall will be 300 and the inner wall will be 400. So I wanna try and get the maximum speed that I can. The other thing that we can do to get to those speeds, so we can adjust the max flow for this filament from 23, which is a little bit on the low side, I think, for this filament, up to 30. And what we can also do is adjust the layer thickness. So we're gonna thin those layers down a little bit. That means less material is being extruded at once, and it should allow us to get up to some higher speeds as well. The whole point of this is to try and reach higher speeds so that we can accentuate problems to see what is better at those higher speeds. If you run everything at a slower speed, chances are you're not gonna be able to see a lot of difference between the two printers. We wanna try and take it to the extreme and that'll make it a little bit easier to identify some problems. So both of these printers do have the ability to outfit them with a higher flow nozzle or heater block, heater block combination. And in the case of the bamboo printer, that is gonna be an aftermarket mod. So there's a kit that you can get and allows you to swap out the nozzles for high flow nozzles. In the case of the Creality, you can actually use off-the-shelf nozzles, which are high flow, 
So it's a little bit easier, I think, in the case of the Creality printer to swap out for a high flow nozzle. Okay, so the test print that I've settled on is gonna be the Autodesk FDM test print. It's gonna give us what we need, I think, in this case. It's gonna give us overhangs, bridging, it's gonna give us fine details, it's gonna give us tolerance testing, and it's gonna be big enough that we can reach some top speeds on these printers as well. And it's gonna have some infill for getting up to those really high speeds also. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get some prints going on these two printers. So it's pretty obvious that there is a problem here. I don't think it's a massive issue. I think that it's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. This is some very fine stringing. So it probably boils down to three things. The, the main one that I can think of is that when I dried the filament and then I split the spool, the material that was on the outside went to this printer. The material that was on the inside of the, the spool went to this printer. So it wasn't completely fair probably. What was on the outside was a little bit more dry than what was on the inside. So I have taken the time to re-dry what I was using for this printer, and then I'll run just the top section as a retest. The other two factors I think are just retraction settings. This one has a 0.5 retraction, and the bamboo runs at a 0.8 retraction. So there's probably a little bit of adjustment that could be done here. And also, I had set the nozzle temperature higher on this printer than what it is typically for this filament because I was running at a higher speed. But in this section, it's running at a lower speed, so it wouldn't be necessary to have a higher nozzle temperature. All those things are probably contributing to this, so what I'll do is make a few little tweaks, rerun the top section, and see if there's an improvement. So as far as the K1 and the tolerance test went, everything came out easily up to 0.3 millimeters. A little bit of pressure had to be applied for 0.2 to pop that out. But I think that's a successful test on that one. As for the Bamboo X1C, Pretty much the same thing. Everything up to 0.3 came out on its own. 0.2 had to be pushed out as well. So as far as that stringing test went, there was a slight improvement with the little adjustments that I had made. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's not quite at the level that the bamboo was, but even the bamboo had some very fine stringing here. It just seemed to be a little bit more consistent. One thing I should mention is that these files came in oriented 
sideways. They actually should have been rotated. I didn't notice it until this point. So my X is my Y and my Y is my X. It's not really a big deal since I'm looking at the overall, but it's marked right on there. So these tests pretty well confirm what I was thinking. The overall surface finish is slightly better on the Bamboo X1C versus the K1. There's not a lot of difference. And considering that both of these ran at pretty high speeds, they're both pretty good. As far as some other issues that we ran into, overhangs, I'm a little bit surprised by actually because on the bamboo printer we were able to get to about 15 degrees whereas the Creality printer it struggled at 20 degrees and I think it may have something to do with the orientation. If this were positioned towards the auxiliary fan it probably would have performed a little bit better. Bridging all looks pretty uniform no matter which print we look at. The bridging isn't particularly good on either one. Um, but there are settings to dial all of that in. If you do a lot of bridging, you can definitely tweak those settings to get better results than this. The only other thing worth noting, I would say, is that the top surface finish on the Creality print is slightly better than on the Bamboo. Bamboo looks a little bit over extruded in some areas. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the results of both. For a quite a bit less expensive printer, the K1 performed fairly well. It's not at the level of the Bamboo X1C, um, but it's not far off either. And maybe with a little bit more adjustment, it can get a bit closer. Guys, I'm interested to hear from you what your results are if you have one or both of these printers. Let me know in the comments and it can help some people to make a decision of which printer they should go with if they're deciding. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you subscribe. It really helps to support the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. And if you can give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it as well. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.